Hello and welcome to Sports Tonight with me, Modu Lamin Sisse. Coming up in the next half hour, the Gambia handed a tough draw in the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. The National Interdepartmental Sports Association prepares to host a major sub-regional sports jamboree as part of activities marking the forthcoming July 22nd celebrations. And we meet 44-year-old Andrea Morris from Canada, who ran 424 kilometers from Koina to Banjul to raise funds for Gambian children, plus world football governing body FIFA finally agreed to introduce goal line technology. I am Modula Minsese and welcome to Sports Night. The Gambia has been drawn in Group B along with the United States of America, France and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in the 2012 FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup starting from the 22nd September in Azerbaijan. The Gambia is making their debut in the tournament and will open their campaign against Korea before meeting the USA and then France. For more on the women's under-17 draw, let's look at this report. The Gambia will face the United States of America, France, and the People's Republic of Korea, according to the official draw of the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup, held on July 6th. The baby scorpions were drawn in what has been considered by many as a tough group, along with USA, the giants of women football, European heavyweights France, and Korea. The draw for the FIFA Junior Championship, which was held at the International Magum Center in Baku, Azerbaijan, was presided over by Tatiana Haini, FIFA's head of women's competition, and carried out by former Dutch football star Ronald Debois. The Gambia was represented by coach Buba Jalo and one of our assistants, Maria Mosso. It is the first time the Gambia reached this far in women's football. The draw, according to FIFA.com, ended a nervous wait for the 16 qualified nations as they finally came to know their opponents in the group phase. The Gambia, who are one of the inexperienced sides in the tournament, making a first appearance, will open their campaign against Democratic People's Republic of Korea or North Korea in Baku on September 22nd. Two days later, on the 24th, the Darling Scorpions will meet with women's football heavyweights, the United States of America, in the second game, before facing France in the third and final group match on September 29. The rest of the draw goes like this. In Group A, you have the host country Azerbaijan, Colombia, Nigeria, and Canada. Group B is where you have the Gambia, along with USA, France, and Korea. Group C comprises of Mexico, New Zealand, Brazil, and Japan. Uruguay, China People's Republic, Ghana and Germany occupied Group D. The opening match beats the host Azerbaijan against Colombia in Baku on the 22nd September. The same day the Baby Scorpions will play their first game against Korea. The FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup starts from the 22nd September to the 13th October in the city of Baku and Lokaram. This is the first time the Gambia is appearing in an international women's football tournament and the Scorpion girls qualified at the first time of asking. The Gambia success story got off to a brilliant start in January when the young stars edged past Sierra Leone with a 4-3 aggregate score in the first round of qualifiers before brushing aside Tunisia in the second round, beating the North Africans both home and away with a 3-1 aggregate score. Well, despite being drawn in a tough group, many of the country's football pundits and fans believe that if the girls are given the right preparations, they are capable of going far in the tournament. However, some are worried, whilst others are seriously fuming about the team's lack of preparation up till now. 
bearing in mind that it is less than 74 days to go before the opening of the tournament. The second edition of the Law for Gambia run came to a climax on Tuesday in Banjul, after 14 days of running covering a distance of 424 kilometers starting from Koina in the Upper River region to the capital city, Banjul. The participants finally reached their destination. The cross-country run spearheaded by 44-year-old Andrea Morris from Canada is meant to raise funds for Gambian children and raise awareness of peer health education issues. Sports Tonight reports on the last laps of the race from the Westfield roundabout to the Atlantic Ozone in Banjul. That was the last piece of action from the Law for Gambia Road race participants. 14 days after the first laps were taken on the tracks of the far flung village of Koina in the extreme corners of the Gambia. Andrea Morris, a Canadian, followed in the footsteps of her compatriot and pioneer of the charity run, Erin Poria, who last year ran an incredible race from Koina to Banjul in support of efforts at raising peer health education in the Gambia. After completing the toughest part of the race, Andrea and her team began the last lap of the run for Gambia 2012 at the Westfield runabout en route to Banjul. The run began with the routine rituals, a moment to indulge in the fun and the emotions were in clear view. In this case, achieving the objective was in clear sight. <laughs> Excited and at times so in clear no nerves at the daunting task facing the team, the group set off for the final act. Upon crossing the Denton Bridge, it dawned on the team that little stand between them and a triumphant entry into the capital city, Banjul. The group kept a peace, stuck together, and marches in on the city gates in a show of solidarity. A year earlier, Erin Poria, the heroine of the previous run, told me how emotional she felt completing the race and entering the gates of the city. Twelve months on, those raw feelings were in display right in the faces of another Canadian, Andrea Morris. Banjul's historic Arch 22 monument provides the team a memorable symbol marking the very point of entry into the old city. What followed next is an emotional hug, a moment to relieve the hard work of the last 14 days. After a deserved dive into the ozone, Andrea regained her energy and this is how she describes her journey from Koina to Banjul in 14 days, covering a staggering 424 kilometers. We saw the children so eager to learn and so clever and picking things up very quickly and keen to share what they learned about staying healthy with others in their communities too. So it was just, uh, it was what kept me going even when it was difficult to run. What did you love most about the whole, the whole event? Two things I really loved. First of all, uh, the children. Um, so excited when they saw us coming by, jumping up and down, crying, to Bob, to Bob, and uh, just welcoming me warmly. The joy at taking the race to the end was unbridled, and the team shared their feelings with GRTS. Let's now hear from Andrea Morris and her team, who were excited to complete the 424-kilometer cross-country run to raise funds for a worthy cause. Well, Andre, it has been tough, but you finally conquered the battle. Um, how do you feel? I feel so great today. I'm very excited to be here with the team and to have finished running all the way from Koina to Banjul. Well, how has it been? It was a fantastic experience. Uh, I learned so much and I met so many great people along the way. We stopped, we talked to people in the villages. We, uh, we just had a really great time. The kids were welcoming us wherever we went and uh, it was fantastic. 424 kilometers, how difficult was it to finally reach Banjul? There were some difficult days. Sometimes it was very hot and I'm from Canada where it's cold so I'm not used to the heat but uh, I kept thinking of why we were running and, uh, and of the children of the Gambia. That's who we were doing this for and uh, that kept me going even on the difficult days. I had a chance to uh, see some of the peer health education programs that are taught by the Nova Scotia Gambia Association. Um, I visited some schools. We saw the children so eager to learn and so clever and picking things up very quickly and keen to share what they learned about staying healthy with others in their communities too. So it was just, uh, it was what kept me going even when it was difficult to run. 
what did you love most about the whole the whole event? 